nine chapters to go and uh, well that's gotta be the longest Hiromashima troll I have ever experienced and one of the first trolls I actually did not enjoy being trolled over mostly because I just know the, you know I'm still a blind believer to the very end, even if I'm not gonna like the end, or even if I'm not gonna like the last nine chapters of Fairy Tale, because this is the Fairy Tale, chapter 537. I'm still gonna be a blind believer, because, well, at least he needs one supporter in his life. But, I'm, but if I'm gonna criticize something, it's going to be this. Is Hiromashima an optimist? Why am I saying that? Because, well... Are, are Hiromashima seriously immune to every single hate out there? It almost sounds to me like he's writing in order to mock the haters, saying like, yeah, continue hate, because then I know you will read. Hell, even the chapter itself says, said something about that the la latest review is selling with rare reviews. Who knows? Well, I'm ranted all about that, but this is definitely, definitely not what it's gonna be about. All I know is that the haters gonna hate and they're never gonna shut up. I just don't see it. If they don't like it, just stop hate on it! But, but, but other than the final thing of this chapter, I did not feel like this sh chapter actually was that bad. It was mostly just about Seraph and Mavis. Mavis says that she cannot forgive Seraph for what he has done, but also that um, uh, she still holds him dear to her heart. But also uh, she reveals how she can uh, forever, uh, well, put Seraph to rest. So, um, so basically she says that she's saying Seraph took a little bit of Mavis's life away because, well, she lo he loved her. But the reason why that true love kiss didn't take away Seraph's life was because a part of her still doubted that. Uh, so she's saying something like, uh, she always looked up to Seraph, but when... Uh, and uh, having experienced his evil side, she also falls into the curse of contradiction. She loves Seraph as much as she hates him. So, uh, so um, she believed that if she could love him uh, unconditionally, she would be able to kill him. But at the same time, she now also realized she loves him so much that she doesn't want him to die. In essence, this is basically the curse as she begins to show, throw a little bit of a sunder aside and saying like now you're gonna die, die, die. People are gonna complain about that but actually that's the one part of the chapter you haters do not have the right to complain about. That makes perfect sense. Mavis has the curse and in essence maybe this was uh, her plan all along by uh, throwing a sunder aside at the same time also throwing in I love you very much side basically she well one could say that she got she, she g g got a heart and when I say good I mean I dropped the word not because it's a blair no not at all it's actually pretty touching but I think the reason why she threw all this fits is in order to just um, have the same kind of heart as Seraph so she lies down with Seraph and saying, please die, at the same time don't die. And with that heart, um, Seraph realizes uh, he can finally get some sleep. As light enters up into the sky, the Mavis and Seraph hold hands. As they finally say, let's all go together in one final heartwarming picture. And, uh, well, I yes, God, I have to say this. If this is a troll too, then I have to say that it's going to be one of the worst mistakes ever. But I believe this was Mavis' plan all along. By, uh, well, having a heart similar to Seraph, 
Maybe she would have the same wavelengths in her heart as Sereth. I know that doesn't make sense, but hell, it's fairy tale stuff is not supposed to make sense. Which is one of the reasons why I have been one of the only people to protect fairy tale because uh, I hate reality. I hate reality and I hate death. It's uh, that I still don't exactly understand when people have lost the loved ones. Uh, and they see this one and they complain that the loved one is revived. Would you be unhappy? Uh, would you be happy if your loved one died behind you and saying, but it's reality? Reality. It's true, a good fantasy always has some little deaths. But a fantasy is not meant to be realistic. And note, I am so seething with so much rage now that I was practically about to scream your ears off. That was my tranquil part. So finally with that, the two curses uh, melt together. Seraph and Mavis ascend, at least what we can, can see. Or um, it's called love, the unifying magic. Because all everybody knows that love is the one magic. And then the chapter ends with the one part that people did not like. Well, perhaps they did not like the chapter, or maybe it's at all too. But what people did not most like is for some surprising reason. Makarov opens his eyes. He is alive. We And that's, I had to agree. Uh, okay. Of all people to revive, how the hell did he do that? However, it seems to be an explanation for the first time ever why Makarov is alive. Technically it's like this, Makarov DID die. However, when Mavis and Seraph ascended to the Golden Plains, uh, I think they gave a bit of their last remaining life force back into Makarov, thus he was revived. And so the final chapter ends with the eternal magician that have been cursed to wander years, 400 years, finally ascending to the golden place. And Mavis, the girl who was ever stuck as a young girl, well, now the bear for the good and the jet black boy, finally at peace in heaven. At least what we can presume becomes heaven, because we see the golden plains, just the same as future Lucy did. So yeah, that's basically this chapter. All in all, just a little bit glimpse of heartwarming and of course a lot of hate. Because, well, people are hate and hating will always be like there. I know, I mean, um, uh, but as I said before, I would have preferred if Makarov also have stayed dead. But only because he's old! Old people die. That's the only reason why. I know, that sounds more heartless than other things, but... My Hiro Mashima said that someone would die this arc. In the end, he didn't mean Makarov. He meant Seraph and Mavis. So the only good guy that died was basically Mavis. At least I hope she died. I mean, as I said before, if this is also a troll moment, I'm gonna be a bit disappointing. But as usual, I'm not gonna watch a single review of Fairytale because I know what they're all going to say. They're all gonna swear and blast and blah 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 blah. So that's basically this chapter. Just a band, just a, a heartwarming first part, a little bit disappointing ending. Although that final page with them walking in heaven was kind of nice. So besides the obvious questions, give me your thoughts. Do you have any?